Start with Nigel Pack, you know, the superstar, the K-State superstar for this basketball team. I think, I think Nigel, um, he, has a, he has a companion and a competitor every day in Marquise. You know what I mean? I think they, they really feed off each other and they really compete. Like in all of our drill work and all of our things and our shooting, time shooting, makes, misses, they are going at it. They're, they're trying to, 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 to make, to see who's the better shooter. And, and anytime when you, and, and you know, when you are christened, like you're going to be this, like everybody has done, Nigel, he has, you got to be so careful about having a sophomore slump. And that's what we're trying to prevent him from having because we want him to understand the target is, even bigger now Uh, people knew you were good last year and they kind of still in the beginning didn't put that guy on you but by the end that guy was on him you know to try to stop him and try to stop what he was able to do and how he was able to help us but I think Nigel's going to be definitely stronger I mean his voice will definitely be heard more because that's something he had to work on as an as a point guard being the command center and saying stuff to everybody and it it ain't always going to be nice Mm-hmm. And it can't always be friendly. Um, so I think that's his biggest learning curve is the leadership side of, uh, of being a sophomore. It ain't, it ain't you. It's not your first rodeo, man. You gotta, you gotta act accordingly. So, but you know, I mean, that touch, that three, whenever he shoots it, we think it's going in. Um, obviously he has to get to the free throw line. He knows that. Um, and that's something that he's really concentrated and worked on. And, you know, we're excited because when you look at things in the, in the landscape of, rec- of, of, of guys jumping in the portal, our core young boys could have dipped. They could have said, you know what? We lost, we're out. But I think they saw at the end, oh, if we do it this way, this is what it, oh, this is what it looks like. And, and how we played and how we finished helped all those guys understand that now nah, the coaches were really helping us and, and, and we can win. You know, we just got to continue to be locked in how we are. So. I think that credit to him and, you know, obviously wanting to be a good player mm-hmm. and not running from that. Does he ever talk about being a, wanting to be like a 180 shooter? <laughs> we, I talk to him about it all the time. And, yeah. and that's, that's the, the thing that, you know, as, as he progresses, setting his own personal goals. And those goals have to, to other people seem unattainable. But to him, he's got to realize, I have the tools to get to that. Yeah. And, and those are the things that, that we, we, we talked about. We talked about it right after the season last year about where he could get um, as an offensive player. You mentioned sophomore slump. You would think that they would have had a freshman slump, both Nigel and Davion Bradford, after no you know, preparation from the summer leading up to the season. So you know, it's, it would be hard for you to believe either of these dudes could have a sophomore slump. Well, I think they, they both hit the wall at times as freshmen, and all freshmen do. And, you know, the, what sucked for Nigel is that he, he hit his with COVID, yeah. you know, and now he's out. And then, you know, if he hadn't got COVID, we might – we felt we could have flipped it then. Mm-hmm. And we started to turn it. The game started to get closer as Nigel got better and, and felt comfortable. And, um, you know, I, I'm just excited for them to be able to, to be kids again, to be able to see what – you know, K-State is about and to see people, you know, and, and to know that this is a great place and, 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 and extremely supported when things are the right way. Davion Bradford, you know, we need to deep dive, you know, onto what he's been able to do this summer. Obviously, he had a great spring that you, you've, you've spoke about before. And, um, you know, he had a really good freshman season for a big center in the, in the Big 12. So, how, you know, how's he come along, you know, in the summer? I think, you know, he's, he, he has to learn, like, to, to embrace his – he's a giant. I mean, just embrace it. Mm-hmm. You know, embrace that you're going to be the biggest thing on the court all the time and act accordingly. You know, we don't want you to be a little dude. We don't want you to, we don't want you to be um, the guy who, who gets it low and kicks it out mm-hmm. and says that was a good pass. We want you to be the guy who gets it low and gets an and one. And, and I think that's his – that's his next step is to be not a jerk or a mean player, but, but commanding of himself and commanding of the ball because he can catch anything. Mm -hmm. He has great hands. He can finish with both hands and his feet continue to develop. 
you know, as, as the year progressed and, you know, with him, it's, it's about being in the best shape, getting as strong as possible. And, and he is, he's everybody's cheerleader. So there's some innate things within him that's not normal. Some, like sometimes big guys are the guys who are always, they get in the back and they're talking about the defense and, you know, being that guy, he, he talks about everything. And he's an uplifter. You know, if somebody's down, he'll go hug them. And, and, I, and I'm not going to kid you, there were times in the huddles last year where dudes were about to break down. And it didn't have anything to do with basketball. And that dude was the first guy to hug a teammate, you know. Yeah. And, and he, here's a kid, and when you know his story, he, he could be the most messed up kid out of anybody. But his spirit is, is big time. He's a good teammate. Um, he's a good kid. And, and he wants to be good. I mean, he, he really wants to be good. So I think as his work ethic continues to grow and get better like it has, I think the sky's the limit for him because of his size. And our ability to get him the ball will be the next thing is we have to find him when we see both of his numbers. Yeah, I mean, I, from freshman season, I saw a dude that's definitely capable of becoming that guy that you want him to be that you just talked about. So – Let's move on and talk about Luke Kazuki. Um, you know, he had a stunted freshman season, but you guys still got him in there after he uh, got back from his injury. And he struggled a lot to shoot the ball, but he showed you some stuff on defense. Talk about what he's looking like this summer. Well, I think the biggest thing with Luke is, I mean, that, I mean, when you talk about a freshman year and, and, and in the pandemic, he had about as bad as a freshman year in the pandemic as you could possibly have. He got hurt in June, missed the whole, you know, missed everything, couldn't, couldn't. So our, I think it was our second workout when we actually got together and, and, and we were able to do stuff um, towards July. He, he got hurt and then he was done, surgery, out. Yep. Um, and so he missed so much. He missed everything, basically. And then once he got cleared, you know, we just played him like, I think four or five days later at Texas. So you go deal with that, Luke. Not only did you not only did you um miss all this, go deal with those dudes, you know. And what we found out is it really affected missing that much affected his confidence, not his toughness. Mm -hmm. And if you would have told me what I would have thought it'd been the other way. I would have thought he would still been the same confident guy offensively, but struggle in the tough stuff, but it was, it was, it was opposite. And I don't think I've ever had a kid who's a score guy who can shoot like he can yeah. turn into a defender. And the, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what happened to him. And he really, he's, he's not soft. He's tough. He's, he's good enough to, to bounce it, to make a play. Um, he has a high Q and I, and I just, you just wish him success, man. Cause he's had some bad breaks and some yeah. bad luck and, you know, we just, we want him to succeed because he, he, he not once did he have a pity party yep. and, and say, what about me? He just came and just kept, you know, rehabbing. We'd see him with his bucket and all of his little trinkets in there and his mask. And he would walk through practice and go to the training room, go to the weight room. And, and that can't be good for a young guy who's never been injured in his life to have to, to, to only hang with the, with the athletic trainer and the, and the strength coach. I think we got one more second year dude to touch on. It's Siri Lewis. You know, I've seen some videos of him in this off season, making some stuff happen, looking like a guy out here that's, you know, trying to get noticed. So, so what's up with that? Siri is, is explosive. Yeah. I mean, Siri has to understand that you have to learn how to play in order to get to play. Yeah. And, you know, we, and you're not, we're not talking about mistake-free basketball because that's not possible. But understanding that when we say do your job, you have to do your job, the job that's in hand. Because if you break down, that breaks everybody else down. Now, talent is absolutely not an issue with him. Dude's yeah. a monster in the air. He can finish with both hands. He's, he's physical enough. Um, it's just got to be – it's got to come together for him. You know, it's got to come together upstairs mentally, and then it's got to come together physically, and then you combine them. And our biggest thing with him is slow down. He's, he plays with his hair on fire. He's just everywhere. 
yeah. and he's in his way. He's in that guy's way. No, that's the wrong play. But then all of a sudden he gets a tip dunk. And then all of a sudden he gets a, a rebound that only he can go get on our team. And so we're, we're trying to get those wild plays to be more consistent plays. We'll, we'll, we, would, we would much rather have consistent than um, – that was unbelievable. Did you just see what he did? You know, and then, you know, go back to not really um, understanding what we want from him. But his spirit has been great. He's an he's a awesome teammate. You know, obviously he's TikTok famous. And the dude loves – he loves his teammates. He loves the joke. He, he loves his coaches. Man, that dude, he, he – he, I mean, we love Siri. Like, and that's the one thing. And sometimes when guys don't play, you get a misconception about that guy yeah. and think, oh, man, he's – he ain't gonna ever play here. That's not him. He's just gotta. He's just gotta. So a couple of things he has to get down, and he'll play as much as he can. It's what Coach Weber tells him all the time. You're you're a few plays away from playing as much as you want, Siri. You got to get to that point. Absolutely. The last three dudes I want to talk about are all front court dudes, and I just want to lump them all together, and you can just talk about them as you wish. Casey Ziagu, you know. I'm thinking, you know, your backup center, you got Monty and then Carlton Lingard. So um, Eziago's got some experience from last year and then Montavious Murphy and, and uh, Carlton Lingard both, you know, missed a lot of time last yeah. season. Three dudes that, you know, I, I want to know what are, what are looking like in practice. I think the funny thing is, you know, when we go out on the road, everybody talks about what you got and what you got. And, what, and so many guys said, damn, you guys got some length, man. And I was like, what? And then when you think about it, we, we're, we're very long with, with, you know, with what we have. And to be able to use it all at once is our next, you know, is the next thing that we hope to happen. Um, obviously, Casey's back. He's, he's actually practicing, but we're not letting him go full go. Um, he's, he's had flashes, um, but we got to be careful with him and make sure uh, that, he, that he's available to play on game day and not worry about, practicing him so much that it affects his game day mm -hmm. uh, production. Um, and I, I think that's the biggest thing with him. He's been an animal in the weight room. He looks unbelievable. He's actually strengthened that knee up to where he didn't think it could get. And if he continues to do that, then you, you'd be saying a two-headed monster of him and Davion. You're going to say, look out. Like with these two guys, you know, being able to, to, to be um, – dominant guys for you mm -hmm. um and obviously he, he he what he has done he's worked his tail off on his free throws like him and Davion both understand you know we we, we like guys you guys are hack shacks right now you guys are, <laughs> like when you when you go to the free throw line it's a mixed bag of what can happen yeah. now Davion's had longer streaks where he's made several in a row and he's had some confidence but he's also posterized the guy who's going to be the number one pick and was so had so much anxiety and, and happiness about it that he shot an air ball from the free throw. And and that's just learning to calm yourself down and, and, and just relax and shoot the free throw. And I think both of those guys, you know, have to make improvement and will make improvement on that side of it. Um, and, and I just, you know, you're excited for Casey because he's getting a chance to come back and compete. Uh, Carlton, Carlton is a weapon if we can get him on the floor. You know, he's legit seven foot. He mm -hmm. legit can shoot it to 30 feet. He can use both hands around the rim. He can block shots. I just think that he, he just – he hasn't been healthy. And he's tried to play through some stuff, and then he had the surgery. And so now he's slowly coming back, and he's not practicing at all. Nope. So, you know, right now we're not, we're not even practicing, but he's doing a lot of skill work. To, so when he does hit the ground, run, you know, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll come back. Um, with us able to ease him into it and then, you know, full forward push him. Um, Montavious, you know, it seems like Montavious showed up and we thought he was going to be the next guy mm -hmm. at that forward. You know, he had a great start to his freshman year. And then, you know, unfortunately injuries are a part yeah. of sports. And is it fair? No. You know, is it fair that, that you know, he's had, you know, two surgeries and he's and, – and he's, been set back in between the first to the second one but now you know he understands everything and when you have a guy that understands what you're preaching but can't get on the floor 
that's a person that's miserable. And that's a person that wants to help, but can't, you know, and that, that's, I mean, and you, and there's a lot of uplifting with him, you know, that, Hey, it's your close man. Just keep, stay positive and keep working, stay positive and keep working. That's all we're, we're really focused with him. And he's back. He's been practicing and he's been uh, in and out and we hold him and then we practice and we hold him and we practice just to see where he is from a physical standpoint because we are huge. When you go against Davion or you go against Casey, um, you go against, you know, Ish or Logan or Siri, those are bodies. Yeah. Like, I think people will be shocked when they see what we look like when we actually show up on the floor and get ready to play um, and, and see, you know, what we look like in our size and length. Like um, the Monstars. Yeah. Well, we hope <laughs> we play like that too. But, but the biggest thing is, Everybody understands there's a job at hand and there's and, and where we have to go and what we have to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's too bad to hear that about Monty. I, you know, everyone's rooting for him. And the hope is, you know, he can't get it figured out because that's the thing. He is such a good kid. And at the end of the day, not many people are, you know, not rooting for that kid. Um, but let's move on, you know, just a few more questions before we wrap this thing up. Always appreciate the time with Coach. Let's talk about the non-con. You know, you have some games scheduled for the non-conference. I'll list them off here. Seven of the, you know, 13 potential games. Um, you got Ole Miss that just got added today, you know, announced today for the, the SEC Big 12 Challenge. You got Marquette, Nebraska, Wichita State. And you got two games against Illinois, Cincy, and Arkansas possibly, you know, one of those two. Um, and then McNeese State, you know, besides McNeese State, I mean, maybe McNeese State's a good team, but those other teams are, are I'm guessing, are going to be ready to try to beat you guys. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a lot of high major games, plus the, the you know, the uh, eight team we play against in the 12. Yeah. So, you know, you got to be ready. You know, it's on, it's on us. You know, Coach said, you know what, we're going to go play some people. And it is what it is. And, you know, it's what he believes. And, and I think it's important that we have to be ready as we're going to see it now, we we just feel like this. We'll have exhibition games now. Yeah, we'll have we'll know how to play in a game like that. They didn't know all those when we we started those young guys. They didn't understand how to play in a game like that. What that means? What that means? What a buy game means? They didn't understand what that means. Yeah, and to and to lose one, they 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 know. Oh, we're playing this team. And and now they understand what a Division II team can do to you and what that means and how you feel if you lose to that team. So I think it's important that we play those games. And I, and I think you'll see a different approach from those guys. Yeah. Um, from, from even a fear factor because, I mean, you know, they were low after, you know, losing to Fort Hayes. Like, you, you understand what you just did and how you didn't compete and how you allow them to dictate tempo. Um, and then if we would play them at the end of the season, we know what would have happened because you guys now understand how to, how, what it means to play hard and how to play hard and how to look at a scouting report and respect a person that you don't think might be as good as you. And, and that's the, that was the hardest thing with them early, respecting opponents because you know where you're playing at and you know where they're playing at and, and, you know, getting their attention on that, you know, I don't think we'll have to worry about that anymore. One more question for you, coach. I mean, this one's, you know, something that I think every program in the country could ask themselves and, 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 you know, reevaluate how, how things are different, but for K state basketball, how much is the vibe changed from last summer where the world was crumbling you know, to this summer where you got to keep that whole court together, bring in some new dudes, and now you're kind of looking up. I think, you know, when you, anytime you know people are, are passing away from something, that's the first thing you're scared of. Then you, then you heard that it affects, you know, pe older people differently. So our head coach in the spring chicken. So now we got to protect him too, number one. You know, and that's that's the thing where I think people, you know, we just we mess with coach about that. And, you know, but the thing is that. You know, we can we can actually talk X and O's with a dude 
and not worry about being too close to him. Mm -hmm. A guy can come in my office and eat his Chick-fil-A and we can shoot the shit right now, as opposed to they had to eat in their car before they came in the building. I mean, something that simple is unbelievable. Like you wouldn't think that that's important, but those are the parameters. You couldn't eat anything in the building. Um, you know, you couldn't, a coach couldn't be with a player in his office. Um, wow. You know, a coach couldn't watch film in his office with a player. So where are we going to go? If all the coaches are trying to find a place to watch film with a guy, now you have these long days and the kids are like, I got to watch. What time am I watching? And like, you know, and you got to change them around and they get frustrated. And then you go on a 13 game losing streak and it becomes even more frustrating because you can't get to them and do what you got to do after each game, go to your, go home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't hang out. Don't, don't mix, don't go, don't do anything. And that's not a good way to live. You know, that's, yeah. But we had to live that way to survive and to beat this thing. And um, I think that's the biggest difference is that the cohesion of being around them 24-7 again and having them come to my house and hang out and having, you know, having official visits, bring families in, you know, have them sign autographs, mm -hmm. which our group didn't do until April. You know, because they didn't, they weren't, they weren't allowed to sign autographs, uh, and that happened in my neighborhood, which is crazy. Jeez. You know, you know, and we were like, "Why are these guys all smiling and laughing?" Like, so I just signed something for. I was like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh, they never, they've never done that since." They <laughs> Only Mike, really. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's a different thing. That's something that small, and that's a huge thing to K State fans and K State players is to be after that game and get stuff signed, take a picture. Um, that's a big thing for college basketball, period, mm -hmm. um, to be able to connect with alumni and fans after the game, in Aggieville, um, on the street, wherever, on campus, that reconnection is happening again. And that's, that's the thing that is exciting is, man, I can't wait to, to be in, in the bill Man, I, I am looking forward to I mean, and you know, people I don't want to be elbow to elbow with people, man. I, I just want to see that ball get kicked up, that first, you know, you know, run back, that that first bomb, that first deuce in the you know, in the flats. I, I mean, I'm excited about that. And I want our guys to experience that. And, you know, Siri came without visiting, so he doesn't know anything about the football games, you know. I mean it's he just doesn't. It's just not. And he's like, man, nobody's in there this year. I'm like, yeah, that's because they said we couldn't have anybody. Yeah, wait till you get in Bramlage and see you know, in there, too. That's how it works, yeah. That's how it works. And so that that excitement, mm -hmm. to hear them say, Nigel Back say, man, that's how it is in there. <laughs> and you're like, what are you talking about? Like, And they really don't know. Yeah, this year they're they going to be so shocked. They don't know. And, 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 and I'm ready for that. I mean, I, I miss – the connection with people you know I like that I like to talk to people I like to talk K-State hoops I like to be around people I like our players to be around us and and the coaches and, and that's who coach Weber is you know guys are in our office 24 7 they're up there mm -hmm. and, and when you don't have to make them come up there then you know you got something good um and and, and that's where you know we won the spring at you won, we won the spring because we got that back in our family. Absolutely. So, yeah, now we're in the summer, and I hope to connect with you again, you know, later in the summer before that kick, but before that first kickoff, you know, in the bill so we can touch base and see how guys are progressing through the summer. But, Coach, I always appreciate the time. Coffee with Chris, always one of the better things that come through KSO. So I appreciate it. All right, thanks.